Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and have been building fish farming facilities for over 10 years. I often get approached by beginners, newcomers, people who haven't built a farm yet, and entrepreneurs planning to get into this business, and they ask a huge number of questions. So today I decided to put together in this video the 10 most common questions I get from beginners and those who are planning to get into fish farming. If you're a beginner and you watch this video, I think you'll find answers to a lot of your questions because the top 10 will definitely be covered here. So let's get started. The first question might seem trivial to those who have been in this field for a while, but for beginners, I completely understand it's a real concern. This is a key question. So which fish is actually best to farm? Of course, I talk a lot about this in my videos. If you're interested, I'll try to provide links in the description. But still, let's go over the key aspects of how people actually choose which fish to farm. The very first thing to consider is the presence of a market for your product. If you want to farm a certain type of fish, be prepared for the fact that there needs to be an existing market for that fish, because if you start raising some kind of unknown exotic species, it could all end up with no sales and big problems since you won't know where to sell that fish. I've actually heard of such cases before. On the one hand, it seems unique because the fish is new and nobody knows it, but on the other hand, since nobody knows it, nobody wants it either. Always try to choose a type of fish that has a large market demand. The next point is feed. It's essential to have feed available for this type of fish. If there's no feed, there's nothing to feed them with and there will be no fish growth. Availability of stocking material. In other words, this fish should have reliable suppliers of stocking material. The next question is, what kind of building do you need for the farm and what size should it be? I'll keep it brief since I cover buildings for our ass in much more detail in separate videos, which you can find via the link in the description. It should be a hangar, usually an industrial or agricultural one. It's better to have a single-story building, there's no need for a multi-story layout. The ceiling height should be at least 3 meters, with a minimum of 2.5 meters under the beams. The floors should be concrete and the building must have engineering systems, naturally ventilation, heating, electricity, water supply, and then the technology is installed to fit all of this. The area of this hangar should be such that you can raise fish at least on a minimal industrial scale because if we're just talking about doing it for fun, you could set up a system on 20 square meters with a couple of pools. But you won't get anything out of it except pleasant, wonderful impressions. So if you want to make money from this to turn it into a business, I recommend considering a hangar of at least 1,000 square meters. What can you grow on 1,000 square meters? Well, let's consider the main types of fish. You can raise about 30 tons of sturgeon, or raise sturgeon for caviar and get about half a ton of caviar, that is, 500 kilograms per year, or 60 to 70 tons of trout, or 150 to 200, and in general up to 300 tons of African catfish per year. But even if you have a great building, your farm won't work without its very heart, which is the technological line. So the next question is, what does the RS technological line actually consist of? I have a lot of videos where I break down all sorts of components of this system, so I'll just cover the basics here. Fish farming tanks are the first block. These are the tanks where essentially the fish are kept and housed, where they are fed and where they grow. There's the water treatment system, a set of filters that constantly filter the water. They remove suspended solids, perform biological treatment, saturate the water with oxygen, disinfect it and return it back to the tanks. And of course the automation systems which control all these processes to ensure the filters work properly and the water flow to the tanks is correct. And the last element is the pipelines. They connect the entire system together like a web. Dirty water is drained through them and clean water is supplied back through them. In short, pipelines are also an essential component of the system. RS, but even if you install an excellent RS line, you still won't get marketable products without stocking material. So what is stocking material and where do you get it? Well, stocking material, I'm sure many are familiar with this term, is basically the fry or eggs, the initial form of the fish that is placed on the farm to be grown to market size. There are mainly two types of stocking material. It's either juvenile fish, which are sourced from a nearby farm, usually within a radius of 300 to 500 kilometers, that raises these juveniles and sells them on the market. Or it's fertilized eggs. If you have your own incubation unit, you can buy fertilized eggs, place them in incubators, grow your own juveniles from them, and then raise them to market size fish. I'll answer right away the question of whether you can produce your own stocking material. Yes, you can, but each time you need to assess whether it makes sense to do so because it's a complex process. 
Qualified personnel are required here, and as a rule, it really only makes sense on large farms. On small farms, it's easier to buy ready-made juveniles or fertilized eggs and grow them into marketable fish. Even if you've built the facility, installed the equipment and purchased the stocking material, nothing will work without feed. So the next question. What kind of feed is used for fish in RAS? Fish in RAS are fed extruded feeds. Extrusion is a special process done at the factory. In other words, these feeds are produced at specialized factories. Basically, it's like whiskers, but for fish. It's the same kind of granulated form with a special composition, where the plant-based components that are added are exploded using high pressure and temperature. They break down into compounds that are more easily digestible. Extruded feed essentially is a type of feed that is maximally digestible by the fish's stomach, promotes rapid fish growth and weight gain, and releases a minimal amount of pollutants into the water, thus not causing problems for the filters. And now a question. What is the difference between farmed fish and wild fish, and between farmed fish from RS systems and farmed fish from cages? Let me answer. First, compared to wild fish? Of course, the composition of the meat and the taste will differ a little. Farmed fish will be fattier, while wild fish will be drier and leaner. But think about the fact that today, for some types of fish, there simply aren't any wild ones available for sale. Try to find wild trout. It doesn't exist. Try to find wild sturgeon. That doesn't exist either. So, if we're talking about whether wild fish can taste better than farmed fish, I might agree with you to some extent. For example, wild-caught sturgeon might have a more interesting flavor, especially for those gourmets who used to eat this fish back when it was still allowed, compared to farmed sturgeon. But now, catching wild sturgeon is a criminal offense. It is listed in the Red Book of Endangered Species. There simply isn't any wild sturgeon available for official sale, so everything sold in markets and retail chains is only farmed fish. Therefore, talking about competing with wild fish doesn't make sense, there's no point in considering it. It's just like with chicken. All chicken is farm-raised. All beef is farm-raised. All pork is farm-raised. In the same way, most types of fish are only farm-raised. They are not caught in the wild. Is there any difference between fish raised in recirculating aquaculture systems and those from cage farms, for example? No, there's no difference at all. The fish are fed the same feed. In recirculating aquaculture systems, the water is constantly being cleaned, the filters are always running, so overall the consistency of the product, the appearance of the fish, and the meat in our ass and in cages are about the same. In ponds, it can actually be worse. Why? Because ponds often have stagnant water. And there's a muddy taste. Properly raised fish in RAS don't have that muddy taste or smell. Where can you sell the fish? Of course, that's something a lot of people worry about. Like, I can grow the fish, but then what do I do with it? Well, that's actually a logical question. Again, I go over all of this in detail in separate videos, so I'll keep it brief. First of all, the fish you raise can be sold either wholesale or retail. So, if we're talking about wholesale channels, these include processors, who sell through their own distribution networks, wholesalers who work with retail chains, the retail chains themselves, fish stores, restaurants, cafes, markets, and so on. There are also retail sales, which basically means selling directly from the farm, online sales, or selling to your own client base. In other words, all of this is essentially retail sales to private customers. That's the first point. Next, where can you sell the fish? It's very important to understand in what form you will be selling, because depending on that, you'll also need to choose your sales channels accordingly. If it's live fish, that's one scenario. If it's chilled, that's another. If it's processed, like smoked fish, that's a third scenario. Deep processing, for example, making cutlets, breaded fillets, or nuggets, is a completely different story altogether. So depending on the form in which you plan to sell the fish, you need to choose the appropriate sales channels. And of course, choosing between wholesale or retail and deciding exactly where to sell is very important depending on your volumes. It's one thing to sell 5 tons of fish a year that can basically be done through acquaintances or private buyers. It's a completely different matter to sell 500 tons of fish. That is clearly wholesale sales, working with wholesalers, retail chains and so on. How much do you need to invest and what is the payback period? I'll say right away, RAS fish farming is a capital-intensive business. To get a more or less reasonable result, you need at least a thousand square meters of building space. And if you look at the equipment, that's about 30 million rubles. If you include the building itself, it's all of 50 million. 
Therefore, to seriously consider this business, you need approximately this scale and amount of money. Of course, you can do it cheaper by doing as much as possible yourself, having a ready-made building and so on. Nevertheless, I'm telling you the current realities of the market today, if you are starting from absolute zero. As for profit, expect that any RIS farm will pay for itself in about 4 to 5 years. Based on this, you can calculate the approximate net profit you can earn from your facilities. Is it possible to raise several types of fish at once? By the way, this is a very common question. Well, it seems like you could, right? I'll take several types of fish at once. It's like diversifying risks and I have a wider range of products. But in reality, I don't recommend doing this because each type of fish requires its own approach, separate systems, separate tanks, separate construction, separate modules, its own temperature regime, feed and stocking material. In short, be prepared that when building a fish farm from scratch, you'll have X amount of problems. If you take on two types of fish, you'll have two times the problems. If you take on five types of fish, you'll have five times the problems. That's why I haven't seen any successful business cases of building a fish farm with a large number of fish species at once. A large number of fish all at once. Yes, master one type of fish, develop it to a certain quantity, and if you want variety, okay, you can add a second type. But under no circumstances should you try to do 15 types of fish all at once. The question is, is this business legal? Yes, this business is absolutely legal. In order to build a fish farm and operate completely above board so that no one can say anything to you even if you are raising sturgeon for caviar, you need first of all to register as an individual entrepreneur or a limited liability company, preferably using the unified agricultural tax system. This is simply a more advantageous tax system which I discuss in other videos. You will need a plot of land and buildings that, according to the documents, are designated for agricultural use with the possibility of fish farming or it should be industrial land industrially zoned. Then you will easily obtain a veterinary certificate for live fish which you will be able to sell calmly and legally. And third, you will need a declaration of conformity if you plan to process the products and produce food products instead of agricultural ones. So, these are the three points that are very important to consider in your documentation. Well, that's 10 questions and 10 answers. This is the foundation, without which it makes no sense to go into business at all. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. This was Anton Pelcher with my channel about how to farm fish and make good money from it. Bye.